My name is Bridget McGowan and what I do is I help professionals be the most engaging, dynamic, incredible communicators ever. Instead of, I'm a certain kind of public speaker, oh no, you're somebody who's providing information that's going to lead to a transformation, that's going to lead to some changes because you don't want people to be exactly the same as they were when they met you when they leave. I find that people are bored with your typical learning and development events, you know, those workshops you have to go to. Therefore, I provide presentations, I provide workshops. You are not only going to hear some good information, but you are going to discuss, you are going to stand, you are going to write, you are going to shout at my presentations. That is why I do what I do. And good afternoon, everybody. Yes, let's get started with easy ideas for hard conversations, how to effectively use your voice to always say the right thing. You know, you show up in life every day with every intention of killing it. I'm talking about you show up with every intention of showing out. And just as you are hitting your stride, I'm talking about you are to the point where you almost want to high five everybody in the audience, everybody in the office, it happens. You bump heads with somebody who just doesn't speak your language. <laughs> you have to do something and you have to do it fast because you know what you say and what you do next can make all the difference between what ends up resulting from this exchange. You've got to do something and you've got to find a way to make sure you're keeping your cool in the midst of all of this. By the time we're done, you're going to know exactly how to communicate in a way where you are always connecting. You're also going to know how to handle tough conversations. You're going to know how to consistently create a positive experience for not only yourself, but the other person involved. My name is Bridget McGowan. I help professionals be the most engaging, dynamic, incredible communicators ever. Let's get started with a three, two, one share out. I want you to get into teams of three and then Take two minutes to create your definition of effective communication, then prepare to share out that definition. Pick one person to share out that definition. Take two minutes to create your definitions now. All right, time's up, time's up. Anybody hear a fantastic definition? Anybody hear a fantastic definition? Fantastic definition. Someone's being voluntold to share her definition. <laughs> and she doesn't even know, oh my goodness, Anna, high five too. You're all in. There's no turning back. Tell me your name, please. My name's yes. Christine. Christine, what's your fantastic definition? It's our Creating a clear and effective message that is easily understood. Thank you, Christine and friends. <laughs> Another definition. Yes, sir. Tell me your name, please. Ozzy, what's your team's definition? Our team's is uh, communicating an idea that reaches everybody in a tactful manner um, that does not alienate anybody. Communicating an idea that reaches everybody in a tactful manner that doesn't alienate anybody. That's fantastic. Any others? Thank you, Ozzy. Yes, tell me your name, please. Jeanette. Jeanette. And we talked about expressing understanding, but what one party is trying to communicate, the other party receives as it's intended. What, the, what one party is trying to communicate, the other party receives as intended, but we all know that doesn't always happen. <laughs> Let's do some real talk. <laughs> Communication definitely means different things for different people, but we all have some common ground 
there's a common thread amongst all of those definitions, and it's about having this clear vision of what you want to achieve every single time you engage with someone. But you have to know how to keep communication from falling apart in order for that to end up happening. There are so many factors involved with why communication can end up falling apart. So what's important today, what we must know is how to keep it from falling apart. One, it starts with understanding what dictates behavior. Why do people act the way they act? We're going to talk about that today. Also understanding personal communication styles, not only the communication styles of others, but also your own communication style. Third, we must always have a plan, and I have a plan for you today. Finally, make everything you say sizzle. Make everything you say just catch on fire. Make sure that it's electric. Make sure that it just makes people say yes. That makes a difference. So let's get started with what dictates behavior. I need you to get back into your teams again, but this time, yes, we'll, we'll explain this graphic too in a second. This time, I want you to think about a time when someone said something rude or demanding or just completely uncalled for. A time someone said something to that effect to you. Pair with a colleague, take one minute to discuss those instances and write that statement on a sheet of paper, and then I'll tell you what you're gonna do with that sheet of paper in a second. Pair with a colleague or get back into your teams, write down a rude or demanding or just completely unnecessary statement. And then I'll tell you what to do with that statement in a minute. I want to hear one of those demanding statements. I want to hear a demanding statement and then give us the backstory and the response. I'm coming over there. We'll start here, and then where was that other hand I just saw? And then we'll come to you, sir. All right, let me get close to you. Okay. Talk into my magic mic. Okie dokie. <laughs> Judith. Yes, hi. <laughs> so the person said, why don't you listen? You always think you know everything. Well, and pause for effect, Judith. Mm. <laughs> and, right, and then give the mmm. Mm. <laughs> and it's a step parent to a teenager, and the teenager only visits on weekends. However, the teenager has taken some classes in communication <laughs> at school, and the teenager says, oh, I can't read it. <laughs> I don't have my glasses. They didn't say that. They said they took a deep breath. <sighs> They looked the mom in the eyes and they said, you're right, we can all be like that sometimes. Ah, nice, nice turnaround, very nice. Thank you, Judith. <laughs> Thank you, hand them a round of applause for Judith and her team, very nice, very nice. All right. Let's Hi. become one with the mic, okay. John. Hello. Hello. You're you like my very white voice. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> You're not allowed to run my life. And then so the backstory is... Wait, who said that? Not me. To whom? <laughs> so the backstory we came up with, she has been in an abusive and controlling marriage for the last 15 years and is finally standing up for herself and leaving her husband. Hello. <laughs> And then the responses to, you're not allowed to run my life is, what makes you think I'm trying to run your life? Okay then, all right, I like it, I can dig it. Thank you, John, high five on that one. Very nice, any others? Okay, I'm coming over there, I'm coming over there, getting in my cardio, I should have worn my sneakers. If Tina Turner can do it, I can too. Let's do it. <laughs> Angel and Mark, why does the room have to be so big? Why do you have to have so many people here? Why do you have to be so popular? My friend James here, <laughs> uh, my friend James said that when he, years ago when he was working at a car wash that uh, a man yelled at him for spraying cologne in his car because his wife was pregnant. And, uh, how did he respond? He said he did not re defend himself and his wife made him apologize to him, and they've been friends ever since. <laughs> How do you like that? 
Are they still spraying perfume in the car? Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> All right. Fantastic job here. Fantastic job. Thank you for sharing. See, this is what it boils down to. You never know what the backstory is when someone says something or does something that's out of sorts, that sounds irrational, that sounds rude. You never know what's going on. And here's something else to remember. People are not born deliberately rude, deliberately nasty or demanding. Babies don't come into this world mean, do they? They don't come <laughs> intentionally mean. People are not born that way. It could be past experiences that are just absolutely horrible. Or maybe when you're met with someone who doesn't communicate the way you need that person to communicate. Maybe that person has had a bad day. There can be an entire chain of events and circumstances to which you are not privy that cause them to act that way. There's a whole wheel of factors that dictate a person's personality, attitude, and behavior. A whole wheel of them. One is how that person wants to be recognized or rewarded. Maybe that person does not feel like he's uplifted at home. Maybe she doesn't feel like she is getting the promotion or the recognition that she should get at work. And that just weighs down on you every single day. So you never know when a person just kind of gets you at just the wrong moment. There's family expectations. You don't know what's going on at home. What is expected of that person? What kinds of questions are being asked the minute the person walks through the door? Then there are friends' expectations. You have friends who are kind of bearing down on you and maybe they're not saying anything outright but there's a certain level of expectations they have for you, and, and the person stresses about that. History of experience with, with education, history of experiences with work, all of this plays into how a person can show up in front of you. Peers' expectations, they're on social media, and you see them going here and doing that and trying this, and you're thinking, my goodness, I should be doing that. And then what can show up in front of you is a whole host of events or other forces that have absolutely nothing to do with the matter at hand. So you don't just have this rude statement in front of you, this demanding comment in front of you, but you have all of this at play and on a person's shoulders that can take the life out of a person that can have a person showing up and not necessarily showing up as his or her best version. Behavior and attitude are dictated by one thing. Behaviors and attitudes are functions of their environment. And either the behavior will get better or it will get worse depending on how you respond to it. I'll say that again. A behavior and attitude can get better or it can get worse depending on your response to it. So what has to happen is you start to think to yourself, well, how do I respond in a way that gets me what I want? How do I make sure that I can get rid of this negativity before I end up going negative myself? That means you must always have a plan. How many of you remember this little gizmo? You remember, what, what, what was that? Blackberry, it was in the Blackberry family. Palm Pilot, still in that family. It was the Motorola Q. It came out in 2006. By 2007, I had one. I was too cheap for the Palm Pilot and the Blackberry. I see y'all kind of suchy muchy and got your Blackberries and whatnot. I didn't have the money for a Blackberry. I had to go with the, yeah. <laughs> Came out in 2006. By 2007, I had one. My husband and I have a son. He'll be six in a couple of months, but he came upon my Motorola Q and he was about two or three years old, so back in 2016, 2017 or so. And I, how many of you keep all of your old phones, right? I, I keep all of my old phones. I don't know what I'm doing with them. Open a museum one day, maybe we can all do that. So I, 
I still had mine. He came upon it back in 2016, 2017 or so. He starts tapping the screen. Nothing happens, okay? The thing hasn't been charged in probably 10 years. Then he holds down that button in the center and he hollers, Siri, play my video. <laughs> of course, nothing happens. So he ends up tossing it over in a corner somewhere and going off in search of a snack. The thing is, we're not much different than my and my husband's son. We like for people to communicate with us in ways that we like. That PDA was not talking to him in the way he liked. There are all kinds of communication styles and preferences out there for the sake of today, we'll talk about only four. As we talk about these four communication preferences, I want you to think about which one sounds like you 51% of the time at least. Now, with connection seekers, this is one of our preferences or one of our styles. These are the kinds of people where they ask you, how was your weekend? What's going on? What did you do? Now, I'll be honest, for some of us, we see that as being nosy. <laughs> Worry about what I did over the weekend. I'm at work. That's all you need to know. But in all honesty, it's not about being nosy. They're just trying to get to know you on a personal level. They're just trying to learn something about you. They're just trying to see if you're human. They're just wanting to connect with you and establish this personal rapport with you and have some kind of emotional connection. See if there's any commonalities there. That's all, they're not being nosy. But see me, you start asking me questions about what I'm doing for the weekend. I'm not about, nobody knows I'm in San Diego. See, if you know I'm in San Diego, you might try to break into my house while I'm gone. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. So connection seekers are just looking for that emotional connection with you, wanting to see that you're not a robot, but that you are indeed human. And then you have the honesty seekers. These are the ones where everything you say needs to be logical. It needs to be very clear. It needs to be accurate. It needs to fit with their prior knowledge. Don't try to pull any flim flam on them. Don't, don't try to pull fast ones on them. Now, we also have the results seekers. They're very similar to the honesty seekers. With honesty seekers, they want details and data points. They want factual information, not because they're questioning the veracity of what you're saying, but so that they can intelligently discuss this at a later point, so they can feel confident in what they're telling others. However, with results seekers, they don't want a lot of details. They don't need a lot of data points. They don't need a lot of facts. They just need the one fact in which they are searching. These are the ones where they just want you to cut to the chase. Okay, if I ask you a yes or no question, give me a yes or no answer. No more, no less. Sometimes they're seen as being abrupt or rude. No, they're just trying to get somewhere. All of that other, those details kind of muddy the waters. Their, their, their thought process, I'm just trying to get there. And then you have the energy seekers. These are the ones that believe in lights, camera, action. Let's do this. Let's bring it. They need to feel a sense of excitement. They need to feel like you are not just physically there, but also mentally there. That you're showing up and showing out and being the best version of yourself. With connection seekers, they want to connect. With honesty seekers, you've got to make sense. With your result seekers, cut to the chase. Don't, don't spend a lot of time tiptoeing through the tulips, dancing through the daisies, or roaming through the roses. Just get to the point. And then with energy seekers, be the absolute best version of yourself. Look alive. Don't show up looking like you just rolled out of bed in your pajamas. Look like you care. Now, pretend the room is divided into, oh, this is nice. It is in four quadrants. How about that? You don't have to pretend. It is in four sections. Oh, this is lovely. My goodness, you thought of everything. With connection seekers, if you're a connection seeker, and let me get through all of the, the directions first. With connection seekers, if you believe that sounds like you, you like to connect, you like to build rapport, you like to ask about a person's new pet kitten named Porkchop. If you're a connection seeker, 
I want you to move to that section of the room momentarily, if you're a connection seeker, to that first section. If you are an honesty seeker, you'll move to this section. And you don't have to take your things with you. We'll just go momentarily for a few minutes. And then if you are a result seeker, you'll move to this section. And then if you are an energy seeker, you'll move over there. Once you get there, there are a couple of things I need you to do. I need you to answer some questions for me. And you'll have to get into cohorts within your cohort, of course. In what ways can your communication style cause you to be misunderstood by others? And what is the best way to effectively communicate with you? Connection seekers, honesty seekers, results seekers, energy seekers, move and then answer those questions. For my connection seekers, for my connection seekers, tell me, tell me, clap if you can hear my voice. Clap if you can hear my voice. It's one way to get a standing ovation. <laughs> Connection seekers, in what ways can your communication style cause you to be misunderstood? Uh, oh, let me come close to you. So, I think we're, should I? <laughs> People think we're asking too many questions and that we aren't able to make decisions because we can't get to the point that we're giving too many details. And how, what's the best way to effectively communicate with you? to initiate communication with us, to listen to us, to because uh, many of us often don't feel heard, and to find something that you have in common with us so that we can bond with you. Nice, can we all do that? <laughs> clap, 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 clap. Why, the, why is the circle the only one clapping? I'll work on it for you. <laughs> Thank you. Honesty seekers, in what ways can your communication style cause you to be misunderstood? Raise your hand and I'll come to you. She has it written down. This is me. You're it. Me. Tag. <laughs> Not me. So, what can we be misunderstood? They might think that we're questioning their integrity or their facts. Yes, yes. So, what can you do to change things? Um, try to get true understanding by both sides and know that communicating with us isn't just going to be a yes or no. We're going to need some facts behind it. Okay. Okay. It's not going to be a yes or no. You need some facts behind it. And there was something else that was said when I was over here earlier that I liked. Yes. That was very nice. Thank you. Yeah. So sometimes we might come back with more questions because we want more details. Sometimes it's taken like we were trying to attack, but it's, we're not so much trying to attack, but just understand. That's all it is, come to a deeper understanding. They're not trying to attack, they're just trying to get a deeper understanding. They're not questioning your, your honesty, they're just trying to make sense of it in their heads. So can, can we, are we good with that? Yeah. We can do that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, we're gonna sing, what'd you say? side of the connection seekers. They're the other, honesty seekers and results seekers can be the opposite side of connection seekers. Very good observation, Janice. What? <laughs> For my results seekers, in what ways can your communication style be misunderstood by others? That we don't care. That we don't care. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> what? What was that? <laughs> but that is not true. Let me come we do care. But that okay, you see you didn't you didn't hear the rest of it. She said, but we do care. <laughs> we just want you to get to the point. We we just want you to get to the point. We care. We just need you to get there. That's right. Like yesterday. <laughs> time is money and money is time. <laughs> and money is pizza. I think I read that on a t-shirt the other day. Too much information is confusing. For results seekers, too much information is confusing. And draining. And draining. And tiring. So, for my honesty seekers, give me just the bare bones. Wait, wait, what'd you say? I said we want details. But if we want 
details will ask for you. Uh, oh, wait. She said. <laughs> If we want details, we'll ask for them. <laughs> just, just the messenger. Just the messenger. That, that, that almost sounded synonymous with, don't come for me unless I send for you. That's what it sounded like. Also, we want to get to the issue before the patient dies. Oh, I wish, I wish y'all could see the body language. Hold on. <laughs> She said, also, we want to get to the issue before the patient dies. <laughs> now we're talking life and death. <laughs> Let's stay on this side of life. We're living better and thinking better now. Work with me, Janice. Now for my energy seekers. <laughs> I'm already tired. In what ways can your communication style be misunderstood? Too much talking. Uh, Too much uh, <laughs> uh, It's like three or four people talking at once. Uh, uh, all too intense. Place, too intense, too much talking. Pie in the sky, squirrely all over the place. Pie in the sky, squirrely all over the place. Not enough detail. Not enough detail. <laughs> right, right, right. We think big picture. We think, so how can we, how should we communicate with you? Just get excited and get on board whether you are or not. <laughs> Smile. Get excited and get on board whether you like it or not. Suck it up, buttercup, and make it happen. All right, thank you for participating. Have a seat. What we must all do... What we must all do... I know. What we must all do is some style stretching. Style stretching. What we must all do is some style stretching. And it's uncomfortable to get out of your comfort zone and to ask connection seekers about their day, and to listen to honesty seekers run through all of the details, and to get cut off by the results seekers, <laughs> and to get knocked out of your chair by the energy seekers. <laughs> but we must all do it if our goal is to be more effective communicators, because not everybody is going to show up the way we want them to show up. So here's your quick formula for how in the world do you figure out what to say, what to do in each instance, and how to identify in what quadrant a person falls. With connection seekers, start with small talk first. Ask them about themselves. Just already have in your mind what is your quick go-to phrase that you'll have. Because especially if you're an honesty seeker or a results seeker, you don't necessarily have one of those. You're thinking facts, figures, let's get it done. Ask about them. Give them suggestions, don't tell them what to do, and then back off and give them time to see how they feel about something. Always show them that you value them, and this just goes for everybody. Show them that you appreciate them and that you find them to be significant and a valuable asset to the team, to the world, to your life. With honesty seekers, have a written plan for them. Have some accurate details. Be logical. Don't bamboozle them. Downplay the emotions, give your sources, ask them what they know. For result seekers, give them the bottom line. Don't spend a lot of time talking about the pie in the sky and the big picture and asking for details. Ask for their solutions, pick up, move on. Energy seekers, come with energy first. Look alive, think big picture, be excited. Be excited to be there. Leave out the details. They don't need all of that. They just need to know what could be. What are we going to do? Moving forward, onward, and upward. Let's do this. Make it happen, people. So here's your formula. No matter the person you approach, always start with small talk. And if you start getting short answers, who do you have in front of you? A results seeker. If you are getting the... Full answers, comprehensive answers, you probably have a connection seeker and keep moving in that vein. But if you get the short answers, you probably have a results seeker. 
If you have someone who tells you, who stops you and say, hey, will you email that to me, text it to me? Uh, is there a website I can go to, a brochure I can look at? Then you probably have yourself an honesty seeker. And then no matter to whom you are speaking or with whom you are engaging, always have a smile, always have a good attitude. It can't do anything but get you further along in the game. Smiles are infectious. It's hard to pass someone who's smiling and you don't feel the urge to smile back. It just, it just bodes well for everything. Now let's talk about creating the rest of the plan. I have a two-step plan for you. Very, very simple, very, very easy. One, always know what is the product that you want from this conversation. What do both of you need to get out of this exchange? You've got to walk into any kind of conversation, in person, online, via email, whatever, knowing to yourself, what do I want to get out of this? I have a sorority sister, she's been texting me the last few days, I can't understand where this mess is going. <laughs> I said, yo E, let's pick up the phone and talk. That's okay, thank you. What do you wanna get out of this? Stop texting me. If you don't wanna pick up the phone, because in my head, I know what I wanna get out of the conversation. Always have some sort of idea of the product, the end product for the conversation. It's like going to the grocery store and you're just picking up some, throwing, in the, throwing it in the cart. Getting all kinds of things, Twinkies, all kinds of mess you don't need. But if you go in there with an end product in mind, I am going to make spaghetti and salad. Aha, let's go to the produce section. Let's get some lettuce, let's get some tomatoes and so on and so forth. You have and a product in mind. And then make sure you have a process in mind. What steps are going to get us to that end product? And I've got six steps for you to get you to that end product of your conversation. The first step is to put yourself in the other person's shoes. You've heard it before. But you have to say to yourself, what is this person's point of view? Why is this person believing that his or her point of view is right? Why does this person believe that his, his or her viewpoint is of greater value than mine? What's going on? What's making this person think this way and act this way and talk this way? Let me just step back for a second and say to myself, how would I act if I was in that situation? What's going on here? Second step is to always focus on bringing value. You want people to leave you being in better positions than they were before they met you. You want people to walk away from engaging with you, being improved, being more impacted, being better uplifted than they were before they had the opportunity to spend time with you. Always pour into the other person. It's just a, a better feeling. Who, who wants to walk away think, thinking, ugh, I don't know if I want to talk to that person again. Always focus on creating value. Next, be prepared to give the why. If you're taking notes, write this one down. The number one reason adults will listen to you is they know why they should listen to you. The number one reason adults will listen to you is they know why they should listen to you. Be prepared. If someone says, this just doesn't make any sense. Why do we have to do this? What's your thinking there? Be prepared to tell them in clear and plain terms. For the fourth one, I need a volunteer to help me out with the demonstration. We're gonna talk about getting rid of toxicity. I need a volunteer to come up for a quick demonstration with me. It's harmless, oh, fantastic, come on up for me. What's your name? Liz. Liz, fantastic, where do you live, Liz? San Diego. San Diego? Oh my goodness, <laughs> Temecula. How far is Temecula from here? Put your wrist up. Yeah. An hour and a half. An hour and a half to the south, north, north. north. Okay, fantastic. How long have you lived out here? Uh, my whole life. Your whole life. Oh man, I just love it out here. I'm so envious of you. How's the event going? I love it. You love it? Oh, go ahead. No, it's great. I love it. Have you attended one before? No, I have not. Oh, I'm telling you. Aren't you thinking to yourself, oh my goodness, I've been missing out. <laughs> yes, yes. All right. So are you going to attend tomorrow as well? I am. Of course, right. You're like, Bridget, why would I not? All right, 
So let me tell you what Liz and I were doing. Thank you so much. You can put your hand down. Well, no, Liz, you tell everybody what was happening as we were talking. She was pushing onto my hand. I was pushing your hand. I, I was pushing against your hand. Yes. Now, what were you doing in, in return? I was pushing back. You were, why were you pushing? You were pushing me, I pushed you back. Okay, <laughs> push me. Liz said, I ain't no chump. Don't let the Southern Cali girl look fool you. Did you ever stop pushing against my hand? No. Not at all? Uh, when you backed off. When I backed off. Oh, ooh, let's talk about that one. Thank you so much, Liz. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Oh, oh, yes, yes, we can clap. <laughs> Liz said, I was pushing against you because you were pushing against me. And I backed off when you decided to back off. The point here is, it takes only one person to decide not to be a fool. <laughs> it takes only one person to say, whoa, this is not working. Well, hold on. Let's take five minutes and then we can pick this conversation back up. Hold on. We're not in the right frame of mind right now to have this discussion. Let's come back this, to this tomorrow. Let's cool off and let's return to this. When you see toxicity getting into a situation, there's nothing wrong with you being the bigger person and saying, this is not working, let's do something different because this needs to be a productive use of my time. Does that make sense? Can you do that, yes or yes? yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> Next, demonstrate emotional control, very closely connected to getting rid of toxicity. What I mean by this is separate yourself from that circumstance or from that conversation, from that situation. This person has something going on. You have some people who just wake up and they're upset at the sight of puppies, rainbows, and tulips. <laughs> and there's just nothing you can do with that person. Separate yourself from that situation and demonstrate emotional control. Finally, as you put together your plan and you put together your process for having effective communication, Make sure you always communicate with grit. Grit stands for generosity, respect, integrity, and trust. Be generous with your information. Don't hold back. If you know this is what the person needs to know, don't, don't, don't try to be surreptitious and clandestine with information. Just go on and give it to a person. Be generous with information. Knowledge is power, but if you don't share it at all, how powerful is it? Communicate with respect. Talk to this person the way you'd want the person to talk to you. Pretty cut and dry. And then integrity and trust are closely connected. Make sure that everything you say and everything you do can be seen as honest information. Let's do a turn and talk. Turn to your neighbor and state the most important fact you just learned about communication. Take one minute. An important fact. One important fact that you just learned about communication. What were y'all talking about? Say it for me one more time and tell me your name. How to communicate with the other types. Yes, and understand that, you know, we show up in conversations thinking, you know, why don't you just get it? Why don't you just talk the way I talk? Why can't you just cut to the chase or whatever? Right, anybody else? Interesting fact. Yes, tell me your name, please. Yes, yes. Anne Marie. Anne Marie. Yeah. I like the, uh, it only takes one of you to stop you being a fool. <laughs> <laughs> it only, Anne Marie says it only takes one of you to stop being a fool. <laughs> I can have a 60 minute eloquent speech and then one person will always gravitate to the one silly thing I said. I love it. As long as it resonates and gets the job done, <laughs> make it happen. Now let's wrap up and talk about how do you make everything you say sizzle. I want you to stand and, and just kind of stand and, and lean over, hunch over like this. Stand and do this. And in your, in your most powerful and the strongest voice that you have, I want you to say, I am powerful. Okay, now that didn't make sense. Okay, now I want you to do this. I want you to do this. And I want you to say, I am weak. I am weak. Okay, that, that didn't work, did it? Okay. 
what I want you to do, have a seat, have a seat. What I want you to do is every day show up with confidence. Work and build on your confidence day in, day out, like there's no tomorrow. And make sure your words and your body language are matching each other. If you are strong and fierce, I want you to walk and look like you are strong and fierce. I want every single word you say to scream strength and fearness, fiercelessness. <laughs> wait, wait, fearlessness. Get it together, Bridget. Secondly, consistently demonstrate your credibility. Show that you can be trusted. Show that you are in control. Show that you are together, that you are all that and a bag of chips. Give everybody a reason to listen to you. This means pull people in with your magnetism. This means get people excited and pumped up about spending time with you. This means pass the microphone, meaning make the conversation not all about you, but about your other listener. And then give useful information that people can take and do something with it. Give everybody a reason to listen to you on a regular basis. And then my final one is, be flawless every single time you speak. A quick story for you. I was in San Diego in May of 2018, getting ready to present at the Association for Talent Development Convention. There were about 10, 12,000 people in attendance. I had flown in from Memphis. I flew from Memphis to Phoenix, had a layover, then flew to San Diego. I landed around 11 a.m. or so, took an Uber to the convention center, went to check out my presentation room. By then, it was a little after 12. I'm calling the Marriott Marquis, that's where I'm staying, to see if they can let me check in a little early. I'm tired. I've been up since probably 3 a.m. Pacific trying to get here. I'm exhausted, hoping that I can go maybe take a nap, freshen up. I call, no one answers. I call again, I'm thinking, what kind of, what kind of joint is this? It's the Marriott Marquis, why is nobody answering the phone? True story. It's around 12 p.m., so I'm thinking it's checkout time. They're probably backlogged. I'll just go to the speaker ready room. As I'm walking to the speaker ready room, I read people's name badges. I don't wear my name badge, but I read everybody else's name badges. And I see this one name badge, and I know this name. I know this man. He does not know me. In a split second, I'm asking myself, Bridget, do you walk up to him? Do you say anything? Do you not? Do you, do you get on your plane and go back to Phoenix tomorrow and regret that you didn't say something to him? Bridget, you've got a presentation in just under three hours. You've got to be mentally ready. You've got to be together. What could happen if you approach this man could be devastating. So I do it. Wouldn't you? I walk up to him and I say, do you live in Beaumont, Texas? He says, no, but I used to. Do you have a sister who lives in Alaska? Yes, I do. I said, okay, just, just give me a minute here, just give me a minute. Whew. I never prepared for this moment because I know what's about to be revealed is going to be mind blowing for both of us. We sit down and I say, do I look like someone familiar to you? Whoa, oh, is right. <laughs> His mouth drops. I said, yeah, I'm your niece. The sister in Alaska is my biological mother. She gave me up for adoption the day I was born. The family knows nothing about me. I know all about the biological family, but they don't even know I exist, save his mother and father who took her to the hospital. He was 16 at the time, she was 22, she had just graduated college, they're all still living at home. Her mom and dad said, listen, man, we're just trying to get by as it is. You're giving this baby up for adoption. We don't know the story here, but hey, we, we can't do this. So, as you can imagine, and here it is all these years later, well, not all these years, but quite a while later, I still have a hard time telling that story, as you can imagine. I'm sitting here thinking, how am I supposed to go do this presentation now? And he was very nice and very gracious, and he's got all kinds of questions. And the next day, we even had lunch together, and he was telling me how it felt like he was sitting having lunch with his sister. She and I have never met. So I go do the presentation, and I'm just like, oh, I've just got to do this, because I knew my audience didn't come to hear some sob story. They, they didn't come to hear how I had just met Uncle O for the first time. They came to hear real information. They came to hear a presentation. And it didn't matter what I had going on. 
I still have to, in some kind of way, be flawless. No matter what you have going on, find some kind of way to pull it together, get yourself centered, show up, and show out every single day. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. I want you to think of one thing you will do with this information and one thing you still have questions about. Stand and tell a neighbor your two things. Stand and tell a neighbor your two things. One thing you will do with this information and one thing about which you still would like to know more. Stand and tell your neighbor your two things. Take 30 seconds. Here are your next steps. One, use this effective communication context. Not everybody needs the exact same thing in a conversation. Style stretching is required and sometimes it gets uncomfortable, it does. But if you want to effectively engage with others, a little bit of stretching is necessary. Have a plan while you're doing that stretching and always make sure everything you say sizzles. Listen, I have this $50 bill here and it is going into someone's wallet. Who wants it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What if I do this to it? Yeah. Still want it? What if I do this to it? Grind it in the ground. Still want it? Right. Because it's still $50, right? It's still worth $50, yeah? Hmm. You see, this is the deal. You meet people sometimes, and they get crumpled up. They get beaten down. They get ground into the ground but it still doesn't change their value, does it? It's still worth a whole lot. You see, the worth of our lives does not come in who we know or what we do or who we are. It comes in who we are and how we demonstrate who we are in the way we connect and communicate with others. We all have value, high value. And we've got to respect that day in, day out. I promise you that you would understand what dictates behavior. You'd understand personal communication styles, also how to create a plan and make everything you say sizzle. If you want more, check out the bookstore. Get a copy of Rise and Sizzle, Daily Communication and Presentation Strategies for Sales and Business and Higher Ed Pros, as well as my newest book, Show Up and Show Out, 52 Communication Habits to Make You Unforgettable. Thank you. Thank you.